So we're going to do the integral of 2e to the 2x minus e to the x, all divided by the square root of 3e to the 2x minus 6e to the x minus 1 dx. Now the first thing I see when I look at this integral is that everything in this integral is in terms of e to the x. There isn't a single other thing. So if we could substitute, for example, u equals e to the x, that would be really helpful for us in this case. So is that possible? Well, in order to do that, we're going to also need du being e to the x dx, since e to the x is its own derivative. So we have to start looking in the numerator for whether we can factor out an e to the x. And in fact, in this case, we can, because we know e to the 2x is the same thing as e to the x and then squared. So this 2e to the 2x has an e to the x hiding in it. That means that if we do this substitution, we're going to get that this equals the integral of, well, let's do the denominator first. We have the square root of 3e to the 2x is going to be 3u, or e to the x here, and then squared, minus 6u minus 1. For the top, we know we're going to need e to the x dx. So 2e to the 2x, when we take out one of those e to the x's, is just going to have one left. So we'll have u to the first power, and then minus the e to the x gets put in our du at the end here. So this e to the x will just become a 1. This is our new integral. And now we have to start thinking about how we can deal with this. Now whenever we see a quadratic inside of a square root when we're doing integration, that's typically a sign that we might want to try trig substitution. But normally when we have a quadratic, what we'd really like is the square root of something squared and then minus 1, for example. So what we'd really like to do is turn this 3u squared minus 6u minus 1 into just one thing squared and then minus 1. In order to do that, we're going to need to complete the square on what we have on the inside here. We know that 3u squared minus 6u minus 1. Well, first of all, we can factor out the 3 from the first two terms here. 3 times u squared minus, and then 6 divided by 3 will give us a 2u minus 1. And when we think about completing the square on the inside here, what we really want is u minus 1 squared, because if we do that, we'll get u squared minus 2u. But then we're also going to have a plus 1. So what's going to happen inside these parentheses is we're going to do plus 1 and then minus 1. And that means this first part here becomes u minus 1 squared. We're going to have to subtract 1 to make up for the 1 that we added. Now finally, if we expand this out, we're going to get 3 times u minus 1 squared, and then 3 times negative 1 will be a minus 3. Minus 1 more gives us a negative 4. So this is another version of what we have on the inside of the square root. If we substitute that in on the inside here, now this looks more like a situation where we'd be able to use trig substitution. The one thing that's still missing is we have a minus 4 on the end of that square root, and we really want to have a minus 1 in order to use those trig identities. So what we're going to need to do is factor that 4 out of everything. Well, the square root of 4 is going to be a 2. So when we bring the 4 all the way out, it's going to end up as a 2 in the denominator. Then the square root, 3 divided by 4, is of course 3 divided by 4. And then we have u minus 1 squared, and then finally we can have our minus 1 since we brought the 2 out of that square root. In this case, because we have something squared minus 1, we're going to let whatever we're substituting equal secant theta. That way when we do this out, we're going to get secant squared theta minus 1, and that's going to give us tangent squared theta. We can cancel that square root there. So what we want is 3 fourths of u minus 1 squared to equal secant squared theta. Now that we're here in this video, we're not going to worry about domain restrictions at all, so we can take the square root on both sides. And what that's going to get us is that secant theta on the left side is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 times u minus 1. Now we want to find du at this point, so let's solve for u minus 1 by itself. We'll have that u minus 1 is equal to, if we multiply by 2 over the square root of 3, 
2 over the square root of 3 secant theta on the other side. And finally, differentiating this on both sides, we're going to get that du is equal to 2 over the square root of 3 times secant theta tangent theta d theta. And now we're ready to plug all of this into our integral. Now the last thing here is that when we plug in our substitution, it's going to be a little bit easier to write everything in terms of u minus 1 rather than solving for u. So let's write 2u minus 1 as 2 times u minus 1 and then plus 1. That way we have a 2 times negative 1 is a minus 2, and then plus 1 gets us our negative 1 as before. Now when we plug everything in, we're going to get that this equals the integral of 2 times u minus 1 is what we have here, 2 over root 3 secant theta, and then we have a plus 1, and then we divide everything by first this 2 on the bottom, and the square root of, remember 3 fourths u minus 1 squared, that's what we defined as secant squared theta. So we're just going to have secant squared theta minus 1, and then finally our du is going to be what we have here. So it's going to be multiplied by 2 over root 3 times secant theta tangent theta d theta. Now we want to look at some simplifications. First of all, this square root of secant squared theta minus 1, that's going to be the same as the square root of tangent squared theta. That's our nice trig identity. And in this video, we're not going to worry about domain restrictions and absolute values or stuff. So we're going to say the square root of tangent squared theta is just tangent theta. And therefore, this square root is giving us a tangent theta in the denominator, which we can cancel with the tangent theta in the numerator just like that. Now we just need to expand this all out so that we can do each integral individually. First of all, notice we have a 2 in the numerator and a 2 in the denominator for each term here, so that's going to cancel out. So looking at this first term here, we're going to have 2 times 2 is a 4, and then over, we have a root 3 in the denominator and then another root 3 in the denominator, so that'll just give us a 3. And then the integral of secant theta times secant theta is secant squared theta d theta. Then we're going to add, this 1 is just multiplied by a root 3 in the denominator, integral of secant theta d theta from these two parts right here. So these are the two integrals that we need to evaluate. This first one is nice and easy, that's just going to give us 4 thirds tangent theta. And this second one, you can check the link in the description. I've put one of Black Pen Red Pen's videos doing the integral of secant theta d theta, but that's sort of a standard trig result. That's going to give us 1 over root 3 times the natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta. So we have a result here, and now all we need to do is take these thetas and bring them to u's and then all the way back to x's for our final result. In order to do that, we're going to look at some triangles. So if we construct a right triangle like this, we know that the secant of theta, we call this angle theta, the secant is going to be the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side. So that hypotenuse secant theta is going to be root 3 over 2 times u minus 1, and then we can just let the adjacent side equal 1. If we want to find tangent theta, we're going to need to know the opposite side as well. So in order to do that, we can use the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle. If we call this side s, we know 1 plus s squared is equal to this thing squared, which will be 3 fourths of u minus 1 squared. So if we subtract 1 on both sides, we get that s squared is equal to this squared minus 1, and therefore s is going to be the square root of that minus 1. Again, we're not going to worry about domain stuff with plus or minus. So that's the result for our opposite side here. So now we're ready to plug everything in. This tangent theta is going to be the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. The adjacent's just 1. So this is going to give us 4 thirds times the square root of 3 fourths u minus 1 minus 1. And then we have plus 1 over root 3 natural log of secant theta is what we substituted at the beginning right here. 
And then we're going to add tangent theta, which is this, one more time in that natural log. And the last step here is actually fairly simple because now that everything's in terms of u, we just have to substitute back u equals e to the x for every single u in this expression. And once we've done this, we're completely finished. So we can add c, and that's the solution to our integral. So when we're looking at integrals like this, where we're dealing with especially quadratic expressions in the denominator, we want to look at trig sub, but we also have to think about how we can take the expressions that we're dealing with initially, such as 3u squared minus 6u minus 1, and mold them into a way that allows us to deal with them using the methods that we're familiar with. So that is our answer.